Now let's talk about tangible assets, specifically property, plant, and equipment. We've been talking about capitalization. Capitalization, again, is the idea that you have an expense, and the expense can be booked as an asset on your balance sheet because it has value going into the future. It's called capitalization. And when we have capital expenditures, students always ask me this question, capital expenditures. What are capital expenditures? Capital expenditures are purchases of property, plan, and equipment. And once you capitalize property, plan, and equipment, so this could be like a building. You spend money on a building, and now you have an asset. You have that building, and that's worth money, and it's going to be worth money for a long period of time. This will be recognized as an expense over the life of the building. And that process of expensing the building over its life is called depreciation. So to calculating depreciation expense, you need to have three numbers. You need to know the useful life or an estimate of useful life of the asset. <coughs> Salvage value, this is how much the asset is gonna be worth at the end of its useful life when you're ready to sell it or get rid of it. And depreciation method, whatever method you're going to use to calculate depreciation method. The method will be, the, one method is called straight line. Straight line would be, they don't give you the formula here. Straight line would be equal to, straight line in depreciation would be cost minus salvage value, the difference between those divided by the useful life. So in this case, cost minus salvage value is 100 minus $10,000, or 90,000. The useful life is five years, so 90,000 divided by five would be equal to annual depreciation of $18,000. I just did that in my head. Right? Yeah, $18,000. Now, th this can be used to determine book value. Depreciation expense is going to be recorded as debit to depreciation expense and a credit to accumulated depreciation. So, accumulated depreciation is going to reduce your non-cash assets, and depreciation expense is going to increase your expenses. And under a straight line, it'll be 18000 every year. So, accumulated depreciation would increase by 18000 which would reduce your PP&E by $18,000. So the net book value would be equal to the cost minus the accumulated depreciation. The cost is 100,000, accumulated depreciation is 18,000. So after the first year of straight line, this particular machine is gonna have net book value of 82,000. Now another approach is called double defining balance. Double defining balance is twice the straight line rate multiplied by the net book value. That is twice the straight line rate multiplied by the book value. So let's say we have a net book value would be cost minus accumulated depreciation again. And if you have a five year rate, then twice the straight line rate would be, rather than one fifth, it'd be 20%. Or would, rather than one fifth, which is 20%, it would be double that or 40%. Let me show you how do this. So let's say this same piece of equipment up here, 100,000 cost, 10,000 salvage value, five year. It would be book value, 100,000 times 40% for $40,000. So therefore, accumulated depreciation on the double finding defining balance would be $40,000. Depreciation expense would be $40,000. Net book value would be $60,000. Under double declining balance, to calculate depreciation expense next year, you would again take 60, you would take the book value of 60,000 and multiply it by 40%. So companies typically use straight line. They use something like double declining balance for taxes. It's called MAKERS, Modified Accelerated Cost Recovery System MAKERS. And it's 150% rather than double defining balance. So companies 
like to get the best of both worlds that way. They, by using straight line for financial reporting, that gives them more profit when they first buy the asset because depreciation is lower. But for tax purposes, they use accelerated depreciation, which gives them more depreciation expense, therefore lower taxable income and lower taxes to pay. So this tends to put tax, defer taxes, putting it off, putting taxes off until a future period. Now, this would reverse later on in the life of the asset, but I want to point out a little discrepancy here from what we said before. When we were talking about inventory, we said that if you use LIFO on your taxes, then you have to use LIFO on your financial statements. The IRS doesn't have a rule like that for depreciation. The IRS says that you can use accelerated cost recovery system, accelerated depreciation on your taxes, but you can still use straight line on your financial statements. So you can use the best of both worlds and you could report less income on your taxes, but more income on your financial statements. Now, with research and development, we said that research and development costs are expensive. If you buy equipment or other long-lived assets for R&D, they can usually be capitalized, provided that they have other uses. But if they don't have other uses, they're specifically for the R&D project, and there's nothing else you can do with them besides this R&D project, then they have to be expensed. So if you build a tower that's going to conduct an, an R&D experiment, and there's nothing else that you can do with the tower besides this little R&D experiment, even though the tower could last for 10 years, it's going to be 